Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Latif and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 37. Hoping you guys are having a great day. Um, I had a pretty, pretty cool day. Um, Pretty productive. Locked in a few more shows. Um, Everything's looking great, actually. It looks like we're going to have a great uh, 2020. I'm excited. Um, Going to a lot of spots. Um... I just booked uh, an Angel and Little Susie show. I booked one, two, three, three cover girl shows. Um, got a few other artists uh, that I'm uh, tying up uh, a few loose ends. So should have those um, locking in any day. So anyway, um, today was a very rainy day. Poured, I mean poured couldn't even look out the window. I didn't drive today. So Angel took a run out to the store real quick, but she came back before it uh, it, it got out of hand. Well, basically, um, it was a tornado. So it was a, we went from a tornado watch to a tornado warning. Now, this is the deal. I've never even, I've mentioned this before, I've never even seen a tornado before. So, um, so I, I have like zero experience except for warnings. Now, this is the deal. I know the damage that they do. It's scary as hell. Uh, you know, I watch some of those shows, like, you know, on the Weather Channel. If you guys never seen them, check them out. Those things are ferocious, man. And they say that um, when when they come, they it sounds like a train. But um, the thing is, and this is what scares me, okay? So we, we check out the Weather Channel. Angel usually keeps me updated. I'm usually working. I'll work to the last minute. I'll work until the windows start to shatter. And then I'll run into the house and you know, take cover, you know, not a good thing, not something I recommend, but it's something that, you know, I do, I'll wait till the last minute, but, um, she'll let me know where, what, what, what cities, um, the, the tornadoes at, what direction it's coming, so the only thing that worried her today, well, it looked like it was coming our way, uh, was the fact that it was in Indian Trail, which is, uh, the city where, the town where my, granddaughter's school is now I wasn't too concerned about that because of the way that school is built and I know that thing those tornadoes can pretty much take down any structure but for some reason uh, these structures seem pretty secure put it this way more secure than the house so if I had to have her someplace I, I, I'd rather have her with me but um, I don't I don't know how uh, secure this house will be this house will probably end up somewhere over the rainbow you know so uh but since the tornadoes pass us so many times i tend to not worry too much about them and that scares me more than anything because god forbid the day that it decides to knock on our door it's going to be bad now it's not all about the house because the house we should we can actually rebuild the house so What's scary is the contents of the house, our personal belongings, my work, my computers, um, just my personal possessions. I think about pictures, even though we upload a ton of pictures online, um, I still have a ton of pictures that are not online. So I, that's terrifying to me. That's really scary. Um, and I really pray that I never experience a tornado coming through our town. I mean, I've seen videos and pictures of subdivisions that look exactly like mine. These are basically, they're not exactly cookie cutters because the houses, there's probably about, I'll say about maybe five or six different styles in this subdivision. So you have the house that looks like mine. I have like my house, the next door, the houses are slightly different. House next to that is maybe a little bit bigger or maybe it's a a walk-up 
a two-story, and then five houses down, you'll get another one that almost looks like mine. It might look like mine, but be a different color. So um, I've seen pictures and videos of subdivisions that resemble mine like to a T, and all you see are these homes that have been flattened out. And you see people looking for family members, looking for, you know, especially pets, people looking for pets, people going through picking up pictures and picking up personal belongings. And it's really, and then, you know, you get the rain behind it. So now everything is soaking wet and it's just a really, really horrible experience. You know, I I really pray that I never have to experience anything like that because it is uh, terrifying, you know. Yeah, I'm from New York, you know. We're really not used to that. We might get these little hurricanes that will, you know, send the garbage cans flying down the street, but we I've never experienced anything that crazy, you know. I think probably one of the worst hurricanes that I was, like, in the middle of was when we went to the Bahamas, me and Angel, and just, as soon as we got to the to the island, actually it was it was one of those um, one of those small islands that are owned by the by um like a carnival or I think Royal Caribbean I forgot which one we are on so it was like Coco Cay or one of those Coco Islands. <clears throat> I remember as soon as we got there, we saw the weather the water was starting to get rough. We saw there was a bit of an overcast, and we got there and they had this humongous gazebo with a bar in the middle. And it seemed like everybody started cramming up in there. So we went and we crammed ourselves up in the area too. And all you saw, all of a sudden, you saw the rain come through. And we were actually okay. And the gazebo was safe. But this, it's like the palm trees were bending. It was the craziest thing. It was like, it was right in front of us, but it wasn't hitting us. We were getting rain. Rain was coming in, but um, it wasn't that crazy. It lasted maybe about, God, maybe 20 minutes. And then after that, it was over, and the sun was out, and it was shining. So, really crazy, really crazy. Today, what happened was it rained, man. I'm talking about this rain. Like, I looked out my window, and you really couldn't see. You couldn't see anything. Um, My garage water was coming up from under the garage, uh, which showed me that I need to get a new seal. (laughs) So, I need to upgrade uh, the seal. seal must be uh, getting worn out because no water or anything is supposed to be coming through there. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, that's uh, that's how today was. It's still raining out there. I got my garbage cans in front. I couldn't even put them back because the ground gets so soft. And I think it gets like that over here because, like I said, this is a subdivision. So I don't think, like, the grass and the trees here were, like, all natural. I think this stuff was planted. So, <clears throat> you know... F- you know, after years and years, these the, the ground is not packed in tight. So when you walk on it, you actually, you know, you sink. You start to sink in. I remember walking through the grass once with my slipper. It actually ate it. I mean, I, I turned around. I walked right out of the slipper. I turned around. I couldn't even find it. I actually went into the into the mud, and I was able to pull it out. But, um, but yeah, so it gets, it's crazy. It's crazy. My backyard um, gets, like, flooded. Now... The way I have a real long driveway and it's kind of slanted a little bit. So we don't get anything into the house, not even in the garage because the way it's slanted. It might get a little bit, just a little bit. But if it was um, slanted any any other way, like tw- forget it, We I would have a mess here every time it rained. So it's not that bad. You know, I could throw a towel along the, and it'll, it'll soak it up. It'll be fine. Um, <clears throat> but I came and put my cans back. So, of course, my cans got knocked over because they go on the side of the house. But I have to walk through a lot of mud to do that so they, they're gonna have to just stay there till you know it dries up maybe tomorrow it dries up a little bit well it probably won't because it's raining right now and there's no sun out so it's gonna it's probably gonna sit so they're probably gonna sit there for, for i'm gonna need at least two dry days you know and even dry days they keep they keep the the, the ground pretty moist you know so but um you know other than that uh, well, I'm glad it's raining now, not when I'm flying. Next weekend, we fly out to Fresno. So I, I always hope for good weather uh, when we fly. Listen, I've flown plenty of times in the rain. <laughs> plenty of times. It's not, I've, I've flown in storms. I've seen lightning look like it's about to hit the wing. 
I mean, pretty close up. I mean, I've seen this, and it's very scary, very scary uh, situation. Um, I've even been in a plane where we had to de-ice like three times, and I always thought, well, maybe, maybe that's a sign. Maybe we're not supposed to be in this plane. <laughs> but you know, you know, once you're there, you, you're gonna go for it. You're just gonna go with whatever they're telling you. Um, and I remember we got stuck in the middle of the runway for like hours, man, hours. And then the planes kept landing, so they couldn't, and they took all the gates, so they couldn't, uh, we couldn't get back to the gate. And it was crazy, there was a lot of artists on that plane. I think Stevie was on that plane, Lisa was on that plane. Uh, man, we had so many. Little Susie was on that plane. Uh, if I had to guess, uh, it was a, like about six hours, about six hours on the runway. Could not get back. Um, and the planes kept landing, and more planes kept landing, and um, all the um, the gates were taken out. There was already planes at the gate. So uh, I think there was too many planes for them to, you know, maybe back up and let another plane um, move to the gate so that we could get out, maybe, you know, go eat or whatever the case may be. So what they try to do, they try to make us comfortable they gave us whatever food we wanted they gave us whatever drinks but that was the problem so the problem with they with the thing that they did though is they started to give away free drinks which i thought was a horrible idea so um because you could just imagine you have all these people frustrated they're sitting in an airplane and they're they're drunk they're drunk in the beginning, they're having a good old time. They're laughing, they're joking. But after a while, they start to get irritable. And then, and then on top of that, they start getting obnoxious. And then they got so obnoxious to the point where the pilot decided to cut off the free drinks. Now what? Now what's happening? Now you got a bunch of drunk people that are getting frustrated. Now it's becoming a bad scene. It's becoming a very obnoxious environment <laughs> you know very obnoxious place to be in you know so you have all these people who are drunk they're acting a fool and it's like oh my god can we get these people out of here it looks like it's going to be a fight with with um flight attendants and you know so but uh yeah you know weather when you're on the road is 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 crazy you know you'd never know and we've gotten chicago i've gotten stuck in hotels where all of a sudden we got hit with a snowstorm and now we were supposed to be, we did the show the night before, and now we're supposed to be getting to the airport the next day, but we can't. Now we're stuck in the hotel for three days. So it gets real bad. It, it becomes a, just a horrible scene. And if you went out there to make some money, now you find yourself spending all this money because you got to spend extra days. And, you know, once the show's over, the promoters, you have some that might look out, but most of the time you're on your own. That's it. It's over, you know. Um, I had another... Um, Another situation where, um, uh, yeah, no, oh, oh, in um, Colorado, and this was crazy because we did a show in Colorado, and we got up in the morning, real early. I remember it was still dark, and we had quite a bit of a drive to um, to the airport, and as we started driving, all of a sudden it just started to drizzle. Then the drizzle started to rain, turned into rain. Then the rain turned into snow. Then the snow turned into bigger flakes of snow. Then it turned into a snow storm. Now, mind you, this is during the drive from the hotel to the airport. I don't remember how long it was, but it was a pretty long ride. Maybe uh, an hour. I'll say it wasn't more than an hour, it was about an hour. By the time we got to the airport, it was a blizzard. The car that took us there had no way of getting back. The roads were already closing. Thank God he got us to the airport in time. However, we couldn't go anywhere because they shut down all the planes. Everything was shut down until, you know, until everything calmed down and they cleared the runways or whatever the case they would whatever they were doing. So, um, man, it was it was it was bad. But it was just so crazy how 
we left and it was just like a perfect night you know well it was a perfect morning it was still dark but by the time we got to the airport within that one hour it was the whole city was everything was covered with snow it was like a blizzard like a serious blizzard and i had never seen anything like that in my life it was absolutely bananas you know so i've had plenty of times where i've had to sleep in the airport me and angel went through that situation actually not too long ago um it wasn't our city but it was the city that we where we had to go to i forgot where we were going but no we were um, i think we went from california to texas and then from texas we had to come home to north carolina but north carolina had a storm it was either north carolina or chicago so we had to cross, we had to fly over whatever city we had to fly over. They weren't allowing us. Plus a lot of those planes were taken off and they had to find places to land. It was a huge, huge mess. So we had gotten in. So when we got there, they kept delaying and they kept delaying. They kept, well, they kept delaying us two hours, two hours, two hours until we got to the evening. And then sure enough, at a certain time, they actually canceled the flights. So there was no more delays. So now it's all about finding a place to kind of kick back because your flight's now leaving at nine o'clock in the morning. So now we're exhausted, we're tired. We've been in the airport all day long. So we find a corner and <clears throat> uh, we find those, uh, they have those reclining chairs. So Angel grabs one, me, I wanna lay out on the floor. So I throw some stuff on the floor right beside her and I, I wanna lay back. I'm not gonna sit on one of those chairs and recline till the morning. I needed to actually sleep. That's the only way time was going to fly for me. And um, so then we got up. Uh, I fell asleep finally. And then uh, in the morning, I woke up because all of a sudden the airport was full of people. So I felt like I was a bum. I was a homeless dude. And uh, waking up with people sitting right across from me, staring at me, people you know, on the chair next to me. It was crazy, you know. Um, and then what happens is we go to check out that flight and that flight was got canceled it got uh, delayed uh, and then they changed the entire gate it was man and this was like last year this wasn't even a long time ago you know and we ended up having to go to the uh, another terminal you know we were like man if we would have known this last night we would have went to that terminal slept in at least we would have been there so it was such a mess and then okay i got a good one for you here right so we get to the other terminal on the other side of the airport. It was a long walk. We finally get there. They delayed another two hours. We're like, what the hell? So we're like, okay, let's grab a bite. It's still early. We have gone into the bathrooms, had to wash up. I mean, you feel like crap, man. You, you're freaking in the airport already like 15 hours or so. So maybe more than that. And so now we're waiting. We, we find a place to eat. Then we come out and we say, okay, now let's go sit close to the gate so we can see what's happening. Finally. Finally, they pick up and they start to call people to line up. And we're like, yes, yes. So we're finally going to get into this plane. Everybody starts to line up. We get grab our bags. We get online. All of, a, all of a sudden, we're all the way in the back. We notice that there's a problem. There's something going on because now people are coming off the plane. And we're like, what the hell is going on? Well, check this out. While the plane was at the gate and the engines were turning, a freaking bird, I guess it was a geese, because they had geese there, flew directly into the engine while it was parked even, and, the, and the motors were still running. That was it. <laughs> now we, now I, think we, we, I think we were stuck there for like another six hours before we finally got the hell out of there. At that point, we didn't care. We were looking for other routes. Hey, can you, like we were willing to take three flights just to get the, you know, three connections, just to get the hell out of there. We were done. We just wanted to fly. We just wanted to, you know, be the hell out of there, you know, get, at least get a little closer, you know. But, um, but yeah, man, it was crazy. So, you know, we have a lot of those experiences. That's why sometimes people call us and they'll try to negotiate our price. Um, and they'll say, well, you know, we only want, you know, one song. And we're like, well, Buddy, the, the whole problem is not how many songs we're going to perform on stage. It's how long it takes us to get there and just the inconvenience of getting ready and having to deal with this. This is That's where the job is. The show is actually the fun part. We don't mind doing an entire show once we're there unless we just, you know, they're not giving us the amount of time we need. If they restrict it, then, um, then we understand. But 
once we're there, we don't have a problem giving you a full show. In fact, we prefer that, you know, so for the fans' sake, we don't want to cut the fans off. Fans pay money or they, maybe they see the group for the first time ever. How is that? You know, you haven't seen this group perform in 20, or 20 years or maybe never, and now they go up there and they sing one song and they leave. That sucks, you know. So I would never want to do anything like that. So I tell them, I said, listen, you know, there's a small percentage of the money that we charge has to do with the show. It's actually the, the you know, the time it takes us to prepare, to get ready, to go through security and to, you know, have to deal with these um, these delays and these cancellations and all this nonsense that goes along with uh, the, the unglamorous part of the music business, which is usually the travel, the preparation for the performance, so... But uh, other than that, uh, you know, it, you know, you take the good with the bad. You know, it's not that often. It's not like every time we get on a plane, that's a problem. But it happens. It happens. It happens enough for you to think about it and hope that it doesn't happen again. <laughs> you know. So, but anyway, um, that's it for tonight, guys. I hope um, you enjoyed this podcast. Uh, please make sure you, if you're if you're listening to this on Facebook, please make sure to like it and share it. And if you can leave me a comment, that's a beautiful thing. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please make sure to subscribe. The likes and the shares are beautiful, but that subscribe is very important. Subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you can, hit the little notification bell. So that way, every time I upload a new podcast, you'll be the first to know. Until tomorrow, enjoy your night, and good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.